and we're live. Welcome back to the Underwater Tribe podcast. Today, we welcome Mr. Christian Loader, wildlife photographer extraordinaire. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. It's great to be back in Bali. Uh, love this place. Love visiting you. All so pretty much landed times. and straight to the studio. Huh? Yeah, landed straight here and then f flying off tomorrow. To, Where are you going? Uh, Raja Ampat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when was it last time you've been there? With you guys, almost exactly. Oh, a year it was ago. our trip on your on yeah on the liveaboard trip? We yeah, did. we did. Uh, what was a ten night trip? Yeah, nine, nine, nine night trip. Whatever nine it was, nights. nine, nine nights. nights. Where well, you guys enjoyed fighting each other with your with your drones, drone almost, almost losing them. Christian, Christian, is disconnecting. Switch it off. I think I won the battle. Yeah, it sounded yeah, like Luca it. Yeah, didn't, Luca for didn't, sure. Didn't speak to me for a few days. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was so busy editing that footage, <laughs> that crap footage that I got. Those stunning conditions, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. yeah that was but you really got something very good out of it. Yeah. That was a really good trip, and I think the highlight, as you probably know, was the the Mola Mola. Ah yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. end of the. The trip. one that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's gonna run away in a second anyway. So. <laughs> Christian's uh, just, just getting with the drone. The it's going to go away in a second, yeah, anyways. Yeah. Everybody, I, everybody uh, on the boat was later. swimming with the with the Mola, with the Mola Mola while I was on the boat yeah. flying my drone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like we are lucky, Mike and I, to be here during Mola Mola season, so we get to see few yeah. uh, underwater. But seeing one on the surface, man, the photography that came out from it was much better than actually <laughs> yeah, the, than one the one down the there. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So blue, nice blue water, plenty of light and. Uh, but you got some drone, nice drone footage. Yeah, and I, I think, um, well, that was the first Mola Mola recorded in Raja Ampat. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. I sent it over to Mark right, Erdman. Right. We, we didn't realize that at the time, but that was quite special. Yes, and um, it was the, now I don't remember exactly the number, but it was the 1,457 yeah. species like recorded in Raja Ampat. And yeah, yeah, yeah here we are. Documented, you, we were there, man. You got your drone with you this time, yeah? Yeah. Okay, because it should be, I mean, it's whale season this time of year as well, so keep an eye out for whales when you're up there. Crossed. Yep. Um, so for, for those people that are out there, uh, maybe they don't know Christian Loader, tell us a little bit about yourself, what uh, your background, who you are, where you've worked, what you do. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Christian. Um, I'm a professional wildlife photographer. Uh, and filmmaker and filmmaker yes. <laughs> uh, specializing obviously un in underwater photography and underwater filming um, but the last few years I've done a lot I've done a lot on land as well in the rainforests especially where I live in in Borneo in Sabah I do okay. some conservation photography um, especially with marine issues of which there are many as you know around Southeast Asia is this what you dry like what you like mostly to to do I like mostly uh, to be d shooting underwater. Underwater okay. photography is still my, my main passion. Um, and uh, what do you like to shoot underwater? Uh, it kind of fluctuates throughout the year, but um, in the last year or so, I've got more heavily back into underwater photography, um, having done a lot of land-based shoots the last few years. Mm -hmm. Last year, I kind of rediscovered my love of underwater macro photography. And tell me that was on our trip in Raja. It was in uh, Ambon, our trip in Ambon. Oh yeah, okay. because yeah, for Raja, Raja we were in Ambon. Before, yep. Came just before Raja. So if you drained <laughs> and you're looking to get the inspiration back, uh, underwater tribe. <laughs> 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 and uh, yes, so um, so I think uh, went back into it and. So when I started, when I started out doing underwater photography, which was probably just over ten years ago, uh, macro was what I that macro was initially my biggest passion, mm -hmm. and that's how that's wh especially when we f when we first met in yes. uh, Sulawesi, Sulawesi was where I did nothing but pretty much nothing but macro photography, macro, yes. especially Lembe Strait. I remember you were coming back yeah. every time, so happy to Manado. I did the Lembe, okay, now <laughs> coral reef. But I want to go back to Lembe and so seven, eight goes by fish in one shot. Yeah, you, you, were, you were managing uh, Kima Bajo. I would go to Lembe for a week, come back for a few days to Kima Bajo. And yes, and make, go out make to you, town. Make you a bit <laughs> jealous of uh, what I'd seen in yeah. Lembe that week. There was, a, there was a good time. Yeah. We were younger too, a bit skinnier. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> During the time. So that was that was seven years ago, right? We we first that met seven was years ago. Seven years ago, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 2010. Two thousand ten. Yeah, because I left. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
And um, so, tell us about uh, what have you been, uh, your latest project, what have you been doing? Where were you? Um, my latest project was just towards the end of last year, um, in December, in, uh, in Sri Lanka. Okay. Um, I was filming blue whales for 10 days. Um, and I wasn't in the water, unfortunately. It was all aerial filming with the drones. Um, and that was uh, for a, uh, an NGO called the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> they, want to, they wanted to get aerial footage of blue whales in the shipping lanes, which is in the, in the southern tip of Sri Lanka. Um, there is a, a So they wanted to have like a shot of a whale, ideally a shot of a whale with a... With a, you yeah, like a big a ferry, ship, yeah, yeah, like a like container ship yeah, or something. Yeah, container yeah. ship passing by. In that part of um, the Indian Ocean, at the very southern tip of Sri Lanka, the shipping lanes are right in the blue whales' feeding grounds. Okay. So that's, it's, 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 it's a threat to the blue whales. Yeah, I've seen a few images yeah. where, or a, at least one image, where there was a, a picture of a, of a, a cargo ship, or oil yeah. ship, whatever it was, with a... a, a a, a large whale impaled yes. on the front yes. of it that arrived into harbor with yeah, yeah so yeah. that image too was quite impressive so uh yeah so the job really was to try and get footage uh footage of blue whales with ships passing in the yeah. background um it so creates it, more impact they can see yeah. like a shipping lane and whales mm -hmm. together yeah. sorry it's not a match <laughs> no you know like we Definitely. have to do something <laughs> about it yeah so it was very, uh, I, I've been to Sri Lanka a couple of times a few years ago. Um, that was actually filming un uh, underwater, getting uh -huh. underwater footage and photos of blue whales and sperm whales. But this was really interesting last year to, uh, to get the aerial perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and and tell us a little bit, uh, what was the day like, you know, like uh, on this sort of shooting? What would you do like from morning to evening? Um, get up around six o'clock. Yes out on the boat by 6.30 when the sun is just coming up. And then uh, we, sometimes we would head, um, sometimes we would head maybe 20 kilometers offshore. Yes. Um, it, it depended where the whales are. And in the southern tip of, some, southern tip of Sri Lanka, uh, out of Marissa, there is a lot of whale watching boats as well. So um, sometimes the whale watching boats, they go out early in the morning and everyone's talking to each other on on the radios mm -hmm. and if there's if there's a whale seen in one area like all of the whale watching boats will go to yeah. try and so spot yeah, it's that like a, easy to see where Whereas, the whales are you just look for the boats yeah so um at times obviously we just wanted to avoid all the other boats right. and we would yes. go off on our own to try and find other gotcha. whales um did you have one of those skippers that they can smell the whales exactly yeah. uh, we had a great skipper okay he knew when he knew kind of when depending on that, on the, on the currents, how the currents were acting that day, even way offshore, he knew where to maybe find, okay. find the blue whales. Okay, so, yeah. and did, he, did, uh, did he have any wisdom that he said, okay, the reason I know it is I'm looking for this or I'm looking for that, or um, just by feeling, <laughs> but the currents? I think he, it's probably just his knowledge of, his knowledge of the currents, and also he's, uh, he was, He's good friends with a lot of the fishermen in that area. Okay. And so whenever we weren't anywhere near the whale watching boats, he was also calling his friends. His friends and checking fishing whale boats. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. They may have seen whale. By the end of the shoot, by the, like, by the ninth, 10th, and 11th day, we ended up going kind of 40, 45 kilometers offshore. Sure. Right. Up, up, uh, long, long way from mm. our base. And uh, how many days did it, did it take you before getting the f first sighting? of the whales uh we got some great sightings on the very first day on the very first okay yeah, nice we, we saw whales we saw blue whales every day um but the problem of doing these kind of shoot as you as you know is you don't see them all day every day yeah, yeah. 10 minutes here 10 minutes there there were a few times where we, we go out at 6 30 in the morning and then mm -hmm. you know we're talking five hours on a boat in the midday you know midday sun seeing nothing Okay. And eventually, early afternoon, maybe we get a couple of whales and get some footage. But what was a it's a long it's a long day. <laughs> was a roof boat? Was well, a I cabin? hope there's a roof on there. A cabin boat? Or? It was a very small uh, inf uh, rib, a very small rib. Oh, a rib with a with a cover. Ah, okay. With a cover. It was a but very small boat. You Hard still get rib, yeah, sun yeah. from the side. I mean, you yeah. you need to yeah, cover yeah. up <laughs> and. Uh, right. What uh, with that kind of thing? So you, you're droning and you're you're out there trying to take. Obviously, you don't have an electric power source on there to 
um, did you recharge your batteries or did you? No, I did was uh, I was limited to how yeah how many batteries of, you had batteries yeah I exactly had. So how many batteries so did I you have? Two I had two drones. Um, each one I think had four I had four batteries. Okay. Um, and when I mean when we're seeing a blue whale, uh, to be honest, it, it's not like I'm flying around like trying to search for the blue whale. No, the no, drone. no. Yeah. Once yeah. we see one, then, then you I go up. Send the send the drone right, up. So right. Um, I never actually, I never used all of those batteries in, oh, in okay. a day. Okay. So. Cool. And um, recently the regulation changed, right, in Sri Lanka? Because uh, before we were able to, to book a trip and go and shoot the whales uh, underwater, shoot with pictures yeah, underwater. So, um, and uh, w what's the new regulation like now? In, uh, especially in southern Sri the southern Sri Lanka, um, they have banned all underwater, underwater filming Okay, underwater, and underwater or in water. water? Can I go snorkeling with them? No. Okay, so They've, in water activity they have, is yeah, they have finished. banned uh, all in water activities with with the whales. Um, okay, and this because to do what? Um, to to protect to protect the whales. Okay, uh, in the shipping line. Yeah. Or just well, just whales just in general. I mean, <laughs> many, many, many countries in the yeah. world, or many places in the world, you're not allowed to jump in the water with. Uh, yeah, but I, I find it uh, a bit, uh, you know, like uh, strange that uh, they try to protect people they love to go to see that, and you know, you can put regulation, keep distance, and everything. Yeah. And then uh, they have the shipping lane going through that. Excuse me, motoring. Oh, there is a whale. Oh, no, sorry, I'm going through. So yeah. I understand you guys were there to to raise this. Uh, Awareness at the end. Did you get the shot you were looking for the, uh, on this recent shoot? Yeah. Yes. Um, by about the fifth, I think the fifth or sixth sixth day, we had a couple of big cargo ships passing, not really close to the blue whale, but it's in the background. Close enough, you can see yeah. it in the in, you in can the footage. Them. You can yeah. get a shot of the whale and then the cargo ship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, a few a few years ago, I did a couple of shoots. Um, when I was working for Scuba Zoo, um, that was we were in, like I say, we were in the water yeah. with the blue whales out of uh, in southern Sri Lanka, which we had, which we had the filming Permit, under, underwater yeah, filming permits, permits yeah. and from the all the different depart different government departments. Right. But now um, that is in incredibly difficult okay. to get. So it's still yeah. even if you are uh, broadcasting uh, yeah. company, it's still hard. Still like BBC still would hard. still have quite difficulties to get there. The BBC would have difficult. They, they, they. The BBC could probably get it. <laughs> okay, so you need to be yeah, very much, high profile. Much anyone else, probably not. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Um. So you know, you you told us about some of your projects now, but what about what what got you into? It? Why did you? When did you start? And why did you start into wildlife photography? Um. Yes. Yeah, uh, I started back in two thousand and seven. Um. At the beginning of two thousand and seven, I left. I left the UK. Uh, I wanted to see the world and get in the water. <laughs> like everybody so dreams came, of. Yeah, so I initially, initially I came kind of backpacking in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. I wanted to become a diving instructor. So I did my dive instructor course in Malaysia. And then I, I worked, my plan was to work for a few years as, a, as an as instructor, dive instructor and right. get into photography and get into filming. Um, but as it happened, it, it happened very quickly. I, I became addicted to <laughs> underwater photography. Photography right away. I worked as an instructor um, in Sabah, in Sipadan. Okay. For just a few months. And then um, I, I got caught a very lucky break. Um, I met this, met this company, the company Scuba Zoo, which is based in, in Sabah. Um, they were a highly renowned underwater filming and photography company. Okay. Show their website. <laughs> Scuba <Scoopers> here. <laughs> so um, yeah, luckily I was in the right place at the right time in Sabah. They had a position available. I had a bit of underwater photography experience. experience I had yeah. a diving experience by that point. Um, so I joined the joined the team at Scuba Zoo. They trained me as a videographer. Was that in Sipadan? Were they were they still doing daily videos was, at Sipadan? Yeah, that was yeah. in, in okay. Sipadan. Um, so at that point, I had I had done a bit of underwater photography, but I had never held a video camera. Right. Uh -huh. um, so I did all my I did a, f a few weeks of training um, with Scuba Zoo uh, at Sipadan, and then I was shipped off to the Maldives. Ah, <laughs> where, okay. Where I was, the, I spent the next three years of my life 
in the Maldives. Wow. A resort, filming and diving every single day. Okay, so it was um, on a resort. It wasn't on the, because uh, I, I remember they had a, one of those uh, those big liverboards. What was it called? Ah, uh, yes, yes. The, Man- seasons, the Four Seasons. Explorer. Explorer. Mantiri, were you on that as well, or were you I just at the a, resort? I, I did a few trips on the Four Seasons Explorer. Oh, which Four Seasons Explorer. Uh, one of the most, well, the most luxurious boat I've ever been on. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah, I think like a, like a lot of um, underwater cameramen, underwater photographers, I started out as a resort yep. videographer uh-huh. um, in the Maldives for those three years, which you know looking back it's like the best time of my life right but also quite isolated and yes it's quite hard to live like a, in a small island yeah you're stuck on a tiny island for months and yeah and i know no what you mean social life yeah. other, other than the guests coming in each <laughs> week um but yeah that was uh, i had some incredible experiences with mm-hmm. obviously in the maldives mantas whale sharks you name and it. were you just shooting video that whole time or did you also start photos initially it was just video um I think uh, after being there for about a year, I bought my first uh, DSLR. Okay. Um, and then I got, I, uh, then I started shooting a lot of photo, doing a lot of photography as well. Um, and was I, also like for uh, scuba zoo or was it like more for uh, your own, uh, this w- this play was on your own free time? Or uh, this was all for scuba zoo. Oh, it was also um, for scuba zoo. I was, f- I was, too. I was filming, yeah, I was filming and doing photography, building up the stock library. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I was that was there for three years, and then I left, left the Maldives, moved to Sulawesi. Yes, which is where, where I where met you guys. Where met. he met me. Where we met Luca, um, and so yeah, having gone from the Maldives for three years with crystal clear waters and big animals, mantas, whale sharks, I find myself in North Sulawesi. Yes, in Lembe, in the muck. Welcome to the muck. And uh, I. I absolutely loved it. I was yeah. uh, I was in heaven. <laughs> it's uh, a good change. It's Certainly. a great change, yeah. Uh, so I was there for I think a year and I think about a year and a half uh-huh. in North Sulawesi, working with working some of that time with Luca. Yes. Um, in the same ho- uh, resort. Yeah. Um, that was where I, I I I think that's where probably photography started to take over. Yeah, because uh, I think around that time you started producing. Um, articles and stuff as well yeah you started doing some writing he yeah, was doing regular, magazine stuff regular magazine articles um, on various underwater photography techniques um, and yeah I mean Lembe is just it's just the most perfect place to to test you know Definitely. to try out, yeah. try Very out controlled. All, all kinds of uh, yeah, various exactly. gadgets yeah. underwater and um, had, a, had just a, a, an amazing time there and so when that finished, that was in 2012, I moved back to Sabah in Malaysian Borneo, uh, still with Scuba Zoo, and I spent the next five years uh, at, the, at, the, at their head office in Kota Kinabalu. And that's where I started to do a lot more land-based projects in, oh, cool. in rainforests and um, Yes, very, very and uh, just recently you won an award, uh, right? Yes, for um, very lucky. Um, very uh, lucky, come on. Oh. You're very talented. <laughs> I remember I saw that picture ahead of time. I said that has to go into competition. You did. I, I remember you did yes. say a couple of years a couple of years ago that. Yeah. And now now it's it's got somewhere finally. Yeah. We All finally right. uploaded. <coughs> I just so happen to have the picture right here. Uh, we can, we're going to throw that up on the screen, and we're looking at it right here on the laptop. Uh, and what's the award that you won? Which which competition so this, was it? So this won um, the award in uh, Asian Geographic magazine. It was the, I won the award of Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Cool. Um, very happy about it. Um, and tell us what it took to take that picture. How could you get that close? Well, I, I just think it's funny that you know, you know uh, underwater photographer, underwater photographer, underwater <laughs> wildlife photographer of the year. Oh, it's a land-based image. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, looking at that, yes, I. I I, I lived to tell the tale. Um, yeah. So this is this was taken. This photo was taken um, in the forest next to the Kinabatangan River, which is a very famous, big, famous river in Borneo. Yes, which has along its riverbanks has all kinds of amazing wildlife. Um, and this was on a shoot. I was with uh, my my r- jungle guide, as well as a my a, a colleague at the time. And he took us a few hundred meters from the riverbank into the forest to try and find um, the Borneian pygmy elephants. Yeah, the pygmy elephants. And we, we, we could hear them from a, quite a way away. Um, 
and eventually we, we came we came to a, a, a gigantic fig tree that is uh, you know the circumference of this fig tree was probably f twice the size of this room wow. that we're in now. okay yeah yeah um and it had lots of folds in the trunk right and around this fig tree covering quite a big area was this herd of 20 to 25 elephants, elephants. Cool, cool and they were cool. just very calm they were just very chilled out and eating figs that were fallen on the floor okay uh, i think so you can the, actually in, see in, some in here. the right hand yeah. side yeah, the yeah elephants over here. Uh, have their trunks on the ground yeah. they're just yeah. um, picking up figs on the ground um so for for the next couple of hours we slowly slowly got closer and closer to the fig tree mm -hmm. and eventually it, when we got to the fig tree we the elephants were still quite chilled out and we were then able to kind of use the fig tree as cover um and it eventually i i we had so much time there that i could change lenses i was shooting telephoto images with close-ups yeah, of their right, eyes and right. things so you, you you said something very very interesting here like uh, for all of us uh, you said it, it took you two hours to get close to them so you saw that there was the action that unfolding and but you still took your time and step by step yes. you need to go and approach so wildlife uh, whether you are underwater or on land you have to approach very very slowly to get a sort of shot like that yeah yeah and, and i mean obviously this is th at the time this was the the first time I've, i'd ever seen a herd of wild right uh, yeah. wild elephants. and the, these are not elephants that are that are in a national park that people go up to and close to every day no this exactly. is a no. wild yeah. herd of elephants yes. that may have only ever seen a couple of handful of people in their lives probably if yeah. you were running at them woo -woo, bye bye yeah. herd. go on yes so um so i was i personally was very wary about trying to get closer and yes. closer slowly. when there's 20 elephants it's, uh, my guide big boys. my guide was much more relaxed he, okay yeah he was very confident and that confidence kind of right. seeped into me yes. as well so yeah for for, for about an hour and a half we just watched from a distance and then we slowly just kind of inched closer gotcha. and closer Obviously let them get the, used to you and yeah so the, by, by the time i get uh, to that fig tree when the elephants are like within a couple of arms a yeah. couple of arms lengths uh, from me obviously then i'm switched to a super wide yeah, yeah this looks like it's almost so this, almost a fisheye so this was with a 15 a 15 millimeter fisheye lens okay it is a fisheye and um incredible the, the intro the the crazy thing about it is it, it, if 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 that wasn't my image and i saw that i would think oh it, it's probably on a on a tripod or it's remotely triggered right but this was me hand hand handheld with a fisheye lens right kind of holding on to the tree standing there holding onto the tree very nervously like arm shaking yeah. sticking my arm out okay so you're actually you've got your back against yeah. the tree here and this the elephant the the main elephant in the middle there um is that was a, a an adolescent female um quite very curious the other the other elephants in the background they were very chilled out they yep. didn't seem to care by this uh -huh. point they didn't seem to care that we were yeah, there right but this one, this one adolescent was uh, took a very curious liking to me. And what happened? A um, couple of times, as as you can see in that image, um, she's like slightly like charging me. Yeah, it looks like it. She's doing a little fake every, charge. Every few minutes, she would do a, like a fake charge and then stop. Okay. But there was a couple. <laughs> there was a couple of times where she didn't stop, and I got trapped, pinned against the the tree. tree oh, with really? Her, with her head on my chest and was she and putting any power said, no, okay and then she'd back was and she then put she any power off. into it or was she just gently pushing up against it i'd say gently pushing me up right but, yeah. Uh, yeah but it's yeah. an elephant it's right. an elephant yeah that's what <laughs> yeah, i mean it's an yeah, elephant. Yeah. it's a lot of weight yeah, I mean, it, it could go uh -huh. you yeah. be crushed it could so crush it was, your ribs and everything <laughs> it, 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 it could have been it could have been bad but it wasn't uh -huh. and uh, it was the most nerve-wracking moment was the guy still nice and relaxed when this was happening and say it's all right he was he was pretty relaxed really yeah. It's all right, bro. Yeah. Take it easy. And I had uh, my colleague at the time, uh, Ben, he was standing like right behind me. <laughs> he was taking photos of the other elephants. But oh, we, does he we, have any pictures of we you were basically being pinned up by the back. elephant? He doesn't have a picture of that moment. Oh. But, uh, we, we have images of each other right. with like the, you know, the herd in the background. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like at that time, neither of us had seen a, a wild elephant right. okay, that cool. close before. So no. we, we were both quite nervous. 
our guide was super chilled out. Yeah, that and helps. And me and Ben were like nervously like watching each other's backs. Yeah. Um, and uh, tell me something about, so you, you spoke about uh, the equipment you were using. What are you shooting now? What is uh, your camera and uh, what so are your, your lenses of choice? So right now I'm using a Nikon D800. Okay. Um, I've had it for about four, four and a half years. Yes. And um, great camera. Very, uh, absolutely great camera, but uh, I've used mine to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's buttons are falling off now. And uh -huh. uh, this very soon, I think in the next couple of months, I'm, I will up upgrade to the today. You can, you can take a guess which one I'm going to go for. The 850. Uh, that's the <laughs> yes. That's it's the time one. to go for it. Can okay. it fit? Can it fit in the 800 housing or no? Did it change too much? I think I no. It has to be a new house. To to get a new and uh, tell us uh, now you're heading to Rajampat. Uh, what uh, lens did you bring with you? So for this trip, uh, for the next couple of weeks, um, I have the Sigma 15mm fisheye. Yes, uh, for all the, the coral scenes. Yeah, um, I have a 16 to 35 millimeter Nikon, Nikon 16 to 35. Mm -hmm. um, I have the Nikon 24 to 70 mil for land, land. like on, on land. Yep. And uh, the 105 millimeter macro lens. Macro lens. Yes, for some uh, um, pygmy seahorse and yeah. I don't, thing. I don't expect to be doing a lot of macro no, photography. No, no. Well, should be. I rarely there will, do. There will be some. Do some night mm. dives. Yeah. And then you, you're going to get some uh, good out of it for sure. And uh, what are you expecting to, to shoot? What are, uh, what's your goal on this, uh, on this trip? What would you like to, to get? I would absolutely love to see a saltwater crocodile. Uh, uh, I have a feeling that but a I lot of people would just say, "No, we don't want to see a saltwater <laughs> crocodile." Yeah, I'm not sure the. I'm not yeah. sure they will take. They will want to take us to no, the place. Probably they they yeah, 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 they yeah. still appear time to time. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry, no, they don't. They yeah. don't appear. <laughs> um, that would be. I would. I would absolutely love that to have that experience. I did um, see one there once. Uh, not underwater. Okay. Was well. it not recently that they had a tree in the channel? You were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the passage. In the passage. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. your friend just saw tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the passage is not far. If the current push okay. the right direction, <laughs> you might get crocodile. To you, stay away from Christian. If you are on the liveaboard with him, it might attract crocodiles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what sort of shot would you like to take of a crocodile? Like. Uh, a split shot I mean, or like uh, a, have you envisioned a certain shot of course I, I think the the best image I can think in my mind would be in the mangroves split level but this is uh my dream. Yeah, these, dream. These, these are not the same <laughs> crocodiles that you're seeing uh in, in Cuba where people are taking Ex pictures yeah. yeah I don't think you want to get that close to these no, crocodiles no. here different um, so different I w I w although I would love to see a saltwater crocodile it's possibly not going to happen no but I would like to see uh, certainly some more whales mm, uh -huh. last time when we were there a year ago we had we saw some whales on the from the boat um, I'd like to send my drone up and shoot aerials yes. of that also I, think, also I think Raja Ampat is it's obviously uh, in my mind it's the most stunning place above water as well as below right so I hope to do a lot of um, topside photography okay. as well finger crossed for sunshine good weather. and good weather yeah 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 um, uh, I'd really like to see more wobbegongs. I've I've shot them a couple of times, but I've I, I don't think I've got the the money shot that I'd like. Mm -hmm. They're not yet, easy so to shoot. Those with they're flat on the ground yep. and yeah. Uh, uh, Unless you get the one where you know you got all the nice uh, sweepers above them or something like that, they're hard yeah. to make mm -hmm. look yeah. interesting. Unless they're swimming. Yeah. Unless they're swimming and where they are swimming more often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In uh, Blue Magic, they swim quite often there. I've seen it several times swimming mm -hmm. around. Yeah. So I think um, did we do Blue Magic last year? We did. It uh, was actually that was close the last where dive, we, where think, we did it? the Mola Mola. When we see the Mola Mola, yeah, we were was the very last dive. Is that the dive where we heard bump heads? No, that no. was mayhem. Fighting. That, yes, was mayhem. that was mayhem. Mayhem. Okay. <laughs> that was an incredible. Yeah, that was something most incredible. I thought they were bombing. You know, yeah. like I was, oh my god, they're bombing in Rajampat, yeah. and then you saw it, yeah, right, Mike? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. So, yeah, you saw it. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So as as many. Um, wildlife photographers and filmmakers and all that stuff they quite often have a memorable experience or a least memorable experience shall we say a scary experience yeah uh, i understand you had something interesting with a, a stingray at one point <laughs> um yeah i would say the probably the, the scariest moment i've had 
working as an underwater cameraman and photographer um, was in the Mal- in the Maldives. Um, I got stung by a big, big marbled stingray. Oh, that's the same one that uh, with the crocodile hunter Steve Irwin. Th- yes, yeah, yeah, similar, yeah, same, similar same, species. Yeah. Uh, this one got me in the stomach. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, I was very lucky. Um, so yeah. he left the the uh, the, like the barb a, actually the going barb, in there. Yeah. 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 No, so um, I was very lucky because diving in the Maldives, as you as you'd know, it's warm water. Yes. You very rarely need to wear a wetsuit. Yes. It's usually boardies and rash vest. Right. But this one this one day, I just happened to think I might wear my wetsuit today. So I, I wore my wetsuit, and I think that is what saved that. That's what saved me from having the barb get stuck and break it. Oh, uh, okay. This stingray jabbed me in the stomach, um, but and I didn't know why I did he do that. Yeah. So um, were you too close? Did you do something like? Uh, so being in the Maldives, I'd seen marbled stingrays hundreds of times. Yes. Filmed them hundreds of times. Uh, never ever seen one aggressive or mm-hmm. annoyed. I could get very close to them, film them very close. Um, on this dive we we went down onto the reef at like 25 30 meters and in the distance coming over the reef i saw a, a marbled stingray swimming over towards us i didn't think anything of it i was filming these my divers right here and then this stingray um circled our group and kind of came around and i just thought nothing of it i thought there's a stingray filming it filming it filming the divers and then it did a second a second circle and the other divers had said afterwards that its tail was pointing up. Right. Up. Okay. I didn't okay. notice that because I was focused filming a guest there and a guest right here. Oh, so it came in from behind you. You didn't even it, see it. It came, I was hovering above the reef, maybe like a meter above the reef, and it came underneath me. And I think it then, I think it then felt trapped by a right. diver you there and there. a diver right, there. Right, right. And it turned around and then it came back underneath me. And as, with my camera, here, the last thing I saw was just a tail come up and almost it's slow motion. It, yeah, it, it as it, it happened, it, yeah. You it wasn't it. a very quick, like, bang. It was actually more like a, a, a slightly slow right. stab. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But it, there was nothing I could do. It, it just felt this jab in my stomach. Right. And then uh, sing, stingray, the stingray swam off, and then I kind of put my hands on my stomach and a cloud of blood go wow. <laughs> came out green wow. the diver who I'd been filming which is as close as you are Mike was just like <laughs> I guess so <laughs> <Screaming>. yeah <laughs> did you film for that <laughs> I don't know if I, was, I can't remember I hope if I was you filmed filming the blood at the time. Um, and uh, but no so I made a so you feel uh, lots of pain immediately or it was painful but um, I I Nothing was, crazy. Pain. Nothing crazy. It was it was bleeding, and I uh-huh. I just I think I grabbed the nearest person to me, and right. we just went up. You're right. Yeah. Not but super fast. We we didn't didn't do a three minute safety stop. No. So this was at the very beginning of the dive. Right. Um, so we went we basically went straight up onto the boat. Um, again, I wasn't in a massive amount of pain, uh-huh. but I thought maybe the pain's going to kick right, in. Right. Yeah. You, can you were minutes. still right. having yeah, the adrenaline, the, the, the poison, or yeah. whatever. Um, got onto the boat and then the boat took us to the nearest uh, resort which was I think I don't know a kilometer away mm-hmm. oh it wasn't even your uh, it wasn't resort. our resort no, no okay. so yes and we, they see you kind of landing there and the first thing they thought was like hey, god damn it here. why do you come here yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. so we, there's me kind of like hobbling down the yeah. jetty holding my stomach and this one of the staff comes out they're like what are you doing here yes and i'm like oh, i've been stung by a stingray yeah. and they're like yeah. the funny thing was this this guy who worked at the dive center he was like oh you're the second person this week really <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah he had a he had a guest walking in the in the shallows, in shallows. around their resort and he got stung right through the calf oh, muscle man lucky um, you he was ready for it see? Then. he had so, experience with the damage yeah so he i got to the dive center they lay me down and they poured some like hot water on my yeah. on the yeah, on yeah. the wound Supposedly right. um, to kill the poison and by this point i think 10 or 15 minutes had passed and i it was painful but it wasn't really painful and i i, I think i realized i d- you know the barb hadn't broken hadn't been envenomated right so it was it was a, a stab like a stab right, wound yeah mm-hmm. um but i yeah got a speedboat took me to to male to the hospital 
had a couple of stitches and got back got All back right. to my, well, my but resort but a, but a nice that a nice story it's quite an experience yeah, it's, uh, yeah. well, everybody gets stung by a sting right the um if you will ever be in a knife fight you can say like do you think you got what it takes <laughs> you ain't no stingy <laughs> <laughs> it scared um the, the funny thing about the story was uh at that at that time my parents were visiting me oh, no. in the Maldives. They were on the ah. they were they were on their holiday for a week. I saw them that morning at breakfast and I said, Okay, I'll see you later at lunch. I've got to go diving and filming oh. and I'll meet up with you later. Don't worry, Mom, <laughs> I'm just a diver. There's no so, danger. No one ever gets hurt in diving. So she had uh the, the the dive center manager um, call call their room and go, um, yes, Mrs. Loder, um, I'm sorry, but uh, Christian's been stung by a stingray and he's in <laughs> hospital. <laughs> what? So she freaks. <laughs> yeah, she's freaking I'm sure. Out. She's um, thinking Steve Irwin. Exactly. Like, uh, so yeah, that wasn't wasn't a nice holiday no, moment for them. No, I guess not. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that's the scariest thing yeah, I would that's say cool. underwater yeah. that I've had. But well, speaking of scary things, I'm looking through some of your photos here. Let's have a look at. Uh, we're we're going to show we're, we're, when we end the podcast here. We're going to show a, a slideshow of your okay. images on the thing. But I just want to talk about a couple of different ones that you brought with you here. One of them is this. It is yep. a <clears throat> wide open gaping jaws of a barracuda. A great barracuda. Did he bite you as well? No, no, no okay. he, he was pretty much biting my camera. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, but he wasn't really biting anything. He was your, he was taking a big yawn. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, you guys will know this individual quite well. This was the resident great barracuda. This is the one that was on the Liberty at the Liberty wreck. Yeah, okay. no, lo- no longer there. No longer so there. No longer there. No, no, it hasn't been around in a long time. There so are a bit smaller ones still uh, okay. coming close, but not that one. So I shot, I shot the, I took this photo a few, quite a few years ago. I think 2009 or 10. Oh, okay. Um, it was one of my. It was early on in yeah. my. Yeah. Well, photography it's one of these ones where you would go, okay. <laughs> um, so this was down quite deep, about 30 meters mm-hmm. bottom of bottom of the Liberty Wreck. Yep. Um, this barracuda was just hovering like a, a few meters off the seabed hanging in mid water um, again as as we were talking about the uh, how to approach animals this was i took a lot of shots I, I took a lot of shots from a distance and i'm shooting with a fisheye lens so the barracuda looks <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right, exactly i'm thinking okay i'm just gonna try and get closer and closer Presser, and closer Presser, Presser. to the point where yeah, it's it's right in it's, your face it's right it's right there yeah and <laughs> and how do you do that I, explain Explain it to us. Like, how do you go that closer? Like, a straight line, you zigzag. How do you do that? I think with this with this individual, I was kind of slowly approaching it um, at a kind of diagonally head on. Right. And your is camera is there ready for the shot? Like, uh, you keep your elbows up, uh, ready to shoot, or you just swim with the camera down and then you uh, flip it up? Yeah, my camera is right out in front of me because. Um, Initially, the, the, the barracuda was quite far away. And even when I'm taking those pictures, the, the barracuda looks this small yeah. with a f- you know, shooting with a fisheye lens. Um, and being a very big, this was a very big barracuda, probably two, two meters maybe. Yes. Um, I wanted that protection of <laughs> if anything yeah, happens, the, ca- camera the camera in front. Camera's sure. Nothing would have happened. Um, maybe. It's not like stingrays. It's just a barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so with that one, I, I, I just slowly was approaching diagonally head on, very like over the space of a minute, a minute and a half. Okay. The barracuda slowly, just slowly. hanging there, very, very kind of relaxed. Um, but it got to the to the point. I, I got closer and closer, and eventually it was about an arm's length in front of me. And um, at that point, the were you using strobes? Yeah, two yes. strokes. Two you were strokes. flashing it. It was not uh, bothered by the flash. It didn't seem to be bothered. No. Okay. Cool. Um, but like I say, this is the resident yeah, barracuda he, on the wreck. Been, yeah, I think he's, he's quite he's used, used to, to divers. Yes. Um, and photographers. So at this, at this point, it's it's less than an arm's length away. It's tur- and then it turned and faced me head on. Um, my buddy was above me. Uh, kind of heading up to his safety stop and he was looking down going oh, oh, oh. Yeah. run away and at that, it's gonna at, eat you alive I was really lucky because at that moment the barracuda let out a really big yawn and, and you got that I managed picture. to 
yeah, take get a the couple, money shot. couple of shots. The, this, like, the money shot. Impressive shot. Really impressive shot. And just after I'd taken, like, two, I think, two shots, the Barracuda then bolted, like, lightning quick Gone. past me. Kind of flicked his tail, like, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, but I bet you when, when you looked in the back of your housing, when you, you looked you at you your... give you the Barracuda bless, or the wildlife <laughs> bless after yeah. you get the shot. When you looked at the back of your housing and you looked at the picture there, you must have been going, Woohoo! I was, I was over the moon. Yeah, um, I mean, you could see the, the teeth. I mean, it's, uh, that is a stunning shot, yeah. just looking at the teeth. Like I say, this was taken back in 2009, I think, and that was early, early on. I, I'd only had a DSLR for six months. Okay, one so of your first. It was, it was, yeah, one of my best shots right. at that time. Sure. Still, still, still one of my favorites. Still, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, looking back at another one of your images here, one this one is another shot from Sri Lanka. Well, yep. not another shot, but a shot from Sri Lanka. Uh, this one looks like it was taken back when you used to work for Scuba Zoo. That's correct, yeah. And I would have to say I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sperm whales in this photo, uh, as well as uh, a, a freediving cameraman. Yeah, this um, this was uh, one of, if not the, you know, the the best, most memorable underwater yeah, encounters I so. I've ever I've ever had. Uh, this was on a shoot a few year, again a few years ago. Um, we were there to film blue whales underwater. We had the permits to 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 shoot and to film underwater. Mm -hmm. um, on this particular day, we didn't see any blue whales in the area, but we did. We were very lucky. We, we found a, a super pod of maybe 50 or 60 sperm wow. whales in a quite a covering quite a big area. And they were all broken up into smaller, smaller families of which I think in, in this photo, there's there's 10, 10 sperm whales. But there were probably a few more right. in, in, in that <coughs> yeah. smaller pod. Um, and it was just a, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, we spent the next few hours going from kind of pod to pod, getting in the water. Um, sometimes we had the sperm whales came a lot closer to came a lot closer to me than they are in in this in this shot. Um, but for this this one, I I love because Ro my friend Roger, my my old colleague, he's in there filming it. It gives a bit of perspective as you know as to how how incredible right. that yeah, encounter, oh, an amazing encounter photo. is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so yeah, I was I was working. I was actually Roger's uh, safety diver on this shoot. Um, with I say a camera. Safety diver <laughs> always with a camera. <laughs> um, and uh, the whole trip was the trip was very successful. We did we did get footage and photos of blue whales underwater, but um, the, the the coming away from that shoot, the the best the best thing was the most was, was, was the yeah, sperm whales. whales. Yeah. Now, was that ever what you what what you guys ended up filming? Or did that ever go on TV or anything like that? Was that so? This was for uh, yeah. Uh, the the footage Roger was shooting underwater. This was for um, a documentary called Wild Sri Lanka. It was a three part okay. series. Uh, one one of the one of the episodes was under the marine wildlife gotcha. of Sri Lanka. So now we uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll. We're getting to the end here. Uh, what we're going to do, we're, we're going we're gonna to lead out with a bunch of uh, Christian's images so you can see more of his work, see more uh, of what we're talking about. But before we get there, uh, you left Scuba Zoo, what, I guess, about a year ago? Yeah, just, just, just over a year ago. Okay, and now <clears throat> you've gotten back into a lot more diving. And what, what projects have you got on the go? What have you got coming up? Uh, what, what are you doing now since you've left uh, working for those guys? Yes. So, um, like I said earlier, the, the last few years I've done a lot more on land. Um, last year, having left the company, I did a lot of did a lot more diving. Fell back in love with underwater photography. Had a few a few shoots here and there. Um, and this year, um, I have obviously this amazing trip coming up now in Raja Ampat. Um, but for later in the year, I'm. I'm still going to be working in the region. I'm uh, doing freelance photography, filming, aerial filming. Um, and in a couple of months time, I have a few more shoots in the rainforests. Oh, okay. In, uh, back in the jungle, back in the heat and the nice. humidity and the sweat okay. and the, leeches, the mud and the leeches. Um, so back in the rainforests in Sabah, in more the, elephant, Malaysia. more winning elephant photos. Let's hope, I hope for some more elephants, not just elephants, but all the other amazing. We're looking wildlife. for that too. And, uh, yeah. do you have a website that our viewers can find you and how can they connect with you? Let us know, plug it in. I have a brand new website, which is uh, christian loader.com 
which is here there we on go. your screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, please please check that out. Um, also, please take a look at my Facebook page right yeah. here, <laughs> Christian Loader Photography. You know, and some of our people are listening on audio only. Instagram page right here. <laughs> Does this work? Does yeah, this work? it does work. I guess yeah. it we'll make it work. So yeah, check out Instagram, Facebook, and my new website. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Christian. Well, thank you very much for for coming in. Well, I know we thank we you drag so you much, off a Mike. plane before you get onto another plane. Thank you so much. It's great to thank hang out you with you guys too. again. Can I and just say? Oh, happy birthday to ah, Luca! Whoa! There we go. <laughs> we got whiskey. <laughs> Christian is just became officially our best uh, <laughs> best guest, guest on ever. The pod. So now, if we could get Glenn Moranji here to sponsor things. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, until the next episode, we're out of here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, Luke. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I won't let it